Breaking tonight, President Trump due to arrive in Japan at any minute. Let's go live to John Roberts at Yokota Air Base in Tokyo with more. John? Judge, good evening to you. A couple of thousand service members are here, members of the Air Force who are stationed here at Yokota Air Force Base, and there are about 14,000 who are stationed here. We've seen some members of the Navy and a contingent of Marines who are normally uh, based in Okinawa. They were doing some training up at Camp Fuji and are now transiting back to Okinawa, but stopping here tonight to hear the president as he kicks off his 11-day five-nation tour of Asia. This is the longest tour of Asia for an American president since George H.W. Bush, about 25 years ago. The president will be here in Japan for the next couple of days, then he goes to South Korea, then a couple of days in Vietnam, going to Da Nang and Hanoi, China, and then finishing it off in Manila in the Philippines. You were mentioning, along with Jason Chaffetz, the threat that this entire region faces from North Korea, and in fact, a couple of intercontinental ballistic missiles have flown, or maybe medium-range missiles, have flown over the northern Japanese island of Hokkaido. So it's an issue of great sensitivity here in Japan as well. In addition to talking about security, the president will also be talking with uh, Shinzo Abe today and again tomorrow about trade. The president not happy with the fact that he, the United States has got trade deficits with all five nations that he's visiting. But this afternoon, Judge, they're going to take a little time off. You know how the president loves to golf. Shinzo Abe loves to golf. They're going to get together with Hideki Matsuyama. He is ranked number four in the world in professional golf to play around this afternoon. So the president kicking off this Asian trip with you know, one of the things he likes doing best, talking to the troops and then hitting the little golf ball around for 18 holes, Judge. All right. You know what, John? Stay with us for just a little bit. The president is landing. We want to uh, uh, take you live to the president's remarks as soon as they begin. Uh, but, John, let, let's continue to watch this as the president lands. And, you know, it's interesting, John, that you say that the president is going to hit some golf balls or play a little golf. He seems to do a lot of business on the golf course. Well, what's really interesting is remember how he used to hammer President Obama for golfing instead of doing the nation's business? Well, the president plays golf probably as much as Barack Obama did. He's out there just about every weekend, whether it's in Virginia, whether it's in Bedminster or down at Mar-a-Lago playing one of the two Trump courses, the International at West Palm Beach or Trump National at Jupiter. He plays an awful lot of golf. But what the president likes to do is do business on the golf course. So in a way, even though he's playing golf, Judge, he's still working. Well, you know what? Uh, and, and I think therein lies the rub, that the president is always working. When he's playing golf, he's working. And that's how he does business. And a lot of people do that. It's not just for the fun of it. It is, a, it is an amicable well, you know, setting within which to discuss world issues. I, I think there are a lot of people who probably do more business deals on the golf course than they do in the boardroom. I, I happen to not be one of them. All of my golf is purely recreational. <laughs> it should never be confused with anything coming close to business. But the president, remember, he had Lindsey Graham out. He had Rand Paul and Lindsey Graham out. He likes to do you know, a lot of congressional business as well with people who appreciate being out there on the golf course. You, you get know, out there, you knock the ball around, you get the smell of grass and all that, and sometimes you, 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 you know the camaraderie builds, and sometimes you see eye to eye uh, more uh, over a, a putt than you do over a boardroom table. Well, there's no question. I've been on those golf courses and the smell of fresh cut grass is almost intoxicating and certainly quite calming, especially if you're kind of stressed out as, as I often was. But I gave up the game because I wasn't too good at it. Anyway, uh, uh, John, we're going to come back to you. Uh, and as we watch the president and first lady landing in Japan just seconds ago, uh, we are awaiting the president's remarks to our troops at Yokota Air Base there. We'll take them live as soon as he begins. But first, joining me now with his thoughts on what to expect from this very consequential president's trip to Asia, former United States ambassador to the UN and our Fox News contributor, John Bolton. All right, good evening, uh, Ambassador. What is the significance of this visit and what is on the line for the United States? Well, it's a, an important visit. It comes at a critical time. I think uh, security in Asia 
uh, is at the top of the list. Uh, trade is certainly there as well. But the first three stops, uh, Japan, South Korea, and China, are going to be dominated by uh, the North Korean nuclear weapons program and what we're going to do about it. And that's why the president's stopping in Japan first to underline the uh, alliance. Uh, you know, Shinzo Abe, the Japanese prime minister, perhaps the most pro-American Japanese prime minister since World War II. He really feels deeply about our country. Uh, and he began his political rise as a member of the Japanese parliament by championing the families of Japanese citizens who were kidnapped by North Korea. Kidnapped, taken there, most of them have never been heard from again. So Abe is deeply knowledgeable about uh, the threat North Korea poses. He stood side by side with President Trump at the United United Nations back in September. I think he'll be uh, very much in favor of a strong stand on this as the president goes to China. So this is a, an important first stop here to, for these two allies to coordinate uh, their next steps. And what do you expect? I mean, do you expect the president to modulate uh, his verbiage at all? I mean, you know Kim Jong-un is listening and the president is in kind of his part of the world. Uh, is Kim Kim Jong-un going to do anything uh, just to be showy or to make a statement? Well, there's a lot of speculation. We could see another missile launch. There's even speculation there might be a seventh nuclear test. I think it would be very poorly advised on Kim Jong-un's part, not that that would slow him down in the slightest. But uh, if he did, it would simply underline why the president, in my view, was right in September at the U.N. when he said denuclearization is the only way forward for North Korea. We're not going to accept that these people have deliverable nuclear weapons. And that's, that's the message he'll certainly carry to South South Korea, uh, but most importantly, when he arrives in Beijing and meets with uh, Xi Jinping, the Chinese leader. And and what do you expect to happen with Xi Jinping in China? I mean, it's kind of been a you know uh, a stop and go with him. Well, you know, for 25 years, the Chinese have been saying they don't want North Korea to have nuclear weapons. And uh, a lot of people in the United States nod and say, oh, the Chinese are with us. But they never do what they have uh, the capability of doing, which is really bringing North Korea's economy to its knees uh, and making sure that the weapons program stops. Now, Xi Jinping is at a, the high point of his uh, political power in China. Uh, I think he can call the shots on North Korea, and I think the president's prepared to put it to him very straight. Either this time uh, you take care of the North Korean nuclear weapons program, let's do this uh, together the easy way, uh, or we will not leave that regime in power with nuclear weapons, and we'll do it the hard way. All right. You know, uh, Ambassador Bolton, I want you to stay with us. I know that